Hello, welcome to The Long Road. My name is Chris Roberts. I'm here with Bill Gurney. But before we get on talking about the middle school, it's hard to believe this is a, a 20th show. You were on the first one. Yes. <clears throat> I didn't think it was, it was going to make 20. <laughs> it's, you know, sometimes a little hard work and yep. do a little research. So today we're going to be um, talking about the middle school. Yes, sir. Last week we did an on-site. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're going to talk about, for example, some of the touchy ones. When the people see the video, they're going to say, holy crap, this is a Taj Mahal. Why are we spending so much money? Why am I spending my taxes on something? That I went to the old Keene Middle School. I went to the old Keene High School for some of them. And that building was perfect for me. Why are we spending all that money? And how is it going to benefit the kids? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a great question. <laughs> The, and I think when the people see the pictures, they're going to see that the craftsmanship is, is outstanding, that the work that's going on there, given the state of the economy, we were able to hire uh, some of the best subcontractors in the state to work on this project. So we're getting a high-quality uh, return on our investment. And I think that's really the key to the whole building is the return on investment. People should remember that the state is picking up 58% of the cost, 3% because it's going to be an energy efficient building and we'll meet that standard easily. And then 55% through the state aid to buildings. And so uh, for the cost that the keen taxpayer is putting in, they're going to get a building that should last for 100 years. Uh, what we're hoping is that the building will go as is for 50 years with routine painting and, and that kind of thing. And then the mechanicals will need an overhaul about 50 years out. And that will give the the community an extra 50 years in that building. So we're building for something that's going to be around for 100 years. And, uh, and that's the kind of quality that we're putting in. And um, I was going through the numbers, and I was going through the, the number of students that would mm -hmm. be in. And so basically, over the first 50 years, it's go if we have a student who goes all three years, yep. that seat charge or the airplane seat it's going to cost the taxpayers about $2,500 or a little bit more than $800 to put that child in the seat for the year. Yep. And, and the <clears throat> energy uh, savings are, are going to be really beneficial down the road as the cost of heating things gets higher and higher. Our wood chip plant is going to provide um, heat that it's going to stay at a pretty solid level in terms of cost. With the, um, <clears throat> with the dollar losing value and then with the oil is sold in mm -hmm. dollars and of course the dollar drops 10 percent OPEC wants an extra 10 percent on it and now we see oil getting closer and closer to 90 dollars yes so you, <clears throat> you're right the the wood chip it's a pretty stable it goes up but it's a pretty stable price yep. it's, it has two benefits one it's renewable <clears throat> it's uh it's putting people to work in our region to provide those chips and uh and the cost is going to remain pretty steady compared to other alternatives from foreign sources. And for the people from Keene who are really, with Keene is really into renewal, it's really into green, yep. we're not talking about something being unloaded in Louisiana, right. refined, and shipped up here. So as far as the carbon footprint is, it's drastically reducing the carbon footprint. It's, it's the, the amount of transportation involved is minimal. Uh, the wood chips that came off of the site that's now the middle school yep. went to a, an air, uh, uh, a heating plant somewhere in this area. A lot of it went over to the seacoast for the electric plant that PSNH has over there. But the cost of trucking it over there compared to <laughs> bringing it from uh, the Middle East is, is, uh, you know, is minimal. Even if you brought it in from Western Canada or Mexico, yes. it's still a high cost. And... Um, we were talking a little bit before we came on on tape, or <clears throat> was people are going to ask, why are we spending so much money on some of the materials? Why can't we buy cheaper materials? You can always buy cheaper <clears throat> materials, but you're going to pay more in the long run. Uh, we're putting in high-quality flooring. Uh, the, the walls are going to have a, a high-quality paint on them. The roof is, is, uh, is uh, a state-of-the-art. Uh, those things are going to last longer. Uh, we're trying to improve the life quality of the building in terms of how long uh, different parts of it will last so that we may be paying a little more up front, but we should get many more years of service 
and if you look at it as you noted with the students on a yearly basis that cost should come back to us um, pretty easily also our cost of maintenance given the materials that we're using are going to be less I don't believe you'll see one of those big tile machines going up and down every night like we do at Keene High uh, those kinds of uh, costs for maintenance won't be evident in this new building and um we used to joke as we were growing up as kids, the difference between the working class people and the rich people, mm -hmm. we could only afford, our parents could only afford the cheap stove or the cheap wash machine, where the rich people, the old woman used to be a manor. Yes. Buy a manor, maybe twice the price, but it may last 10, 15 years longer. Absolutely. And, and so <clears throat> it's, it's, it's going to mm -hmm. work out. It's going to be beneficial. Yes. And... Um, <clears throat> So the other question that's been in the air, <clears throat> are the students going to start in the next school year at the middle school? I believe they'll start at the new school. <laughs> uh, we, we're not sure exactly the date then we, that we will get possession of the building. The date now in our contract is July, 3rd, July 20th. Uh, I don't know if the whole building will be done at that point. Our hope is that we'll be able to open, that all the life safety features will be going, our computer systems will be hooked up, and, uh, and we'll be able to start school uh, on the first day. That's our goal. And the current middle school, you don't have any gym. You don't you get to use the auditorium. So if you go to the brand new middle school and the gym and the auditorium is not there or not usable, <clears throat> the children are still going to have the same opportunities, the same facilities that they have in the current gym. Right. We should have a gym because the, we're heating that all winter to lower the moisture content yeah. of the cement. Uh, so they'll be able to put a new floor on that in the spring. So we should have our gym. Uh, we should have our classrooms, our cafeteria, um, and the, the brains, that central part where all the electronics and utilities come in. The, as long as those are <coughs> operational, we'll be ready to go. And... Um, <clears throat> In front of 34 West Street, there's a big sign Very for big sale. Sign. And when I was on the school board before, keen taxpayers, mm -hmm. and it was always that big thing, get rid of 34 West yes. Street, get rid of 34 West Street, because it was, we shouldn't be in the property business. So when do you expect to be out at the new middle school? Uh, right now, the completion date is the same for the middle school. The, uh, the SAU <coughs> building is ahead of schedule. Uh, but there's going to be a time when they're going to pull some of those carpenters that are now working there. It's stick built, so it's a quicker yeah. turnaround. Yeah. They're going to use some of those carpenters at the middle school um, as we get farther along in the project. Uh, McMillan's goal, uh, the company built, the, the main contractor's goal is to turn over both properties at the same time, as well as the, pot, the heating plant. Uh, but I think for all, all intents and purposes, the SAU will be done um, in late spring. And so we'll, we saw we were down into the heating plant, yes. and that heating plant's going to be cool. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be pretty critical. Yes. No heating plant, no middle school. Right. And so, <clears throat> is that heating plant going to heat the, the water system too? For it will provide, I believe it will <clears throat> provide some hot water. We also have a boilers in mm. each of the buildings, uh, to uh, in, the, in Daniels and in the uh, the new middle school that will heat on the two shoulder months. Uh, early fall and, and late spring because once we start the, the wood chip plant it's going to run probably for six months and when we only need heat for an hour in the morning it's not economical to run it so they'll be able to provide that heat uh, internally for those months. So the school will be doing what a lot, a lot of my grandkids come in the morning so I get up and I turn the heat yes. up to about 64 and as soon as they're off the school, I turn it down about 58 and that's, put a sweater or a jacket on. Yeah. You know, at, two, at 280, 290 a gallon, you yeah. just can't afford to waste heat. And these buildings are, are super <coughs> insulated, so they're going to retain heat much better than, than our old buildings. And to, when you talk about insulation, as we were walking through the area, we went into some rooms. It was nice and warm. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as soon as you went to the other rooms, it was freezing cold. Yep. The insulation was just keeping it all in there. Well, most of the, ro the roof areas will have a double layer of insulation, uh, that polystyrene. Uh, the, w the insulation on the walls is being blown on, and then there'll be an air pocket, and then you'll see yep. the brick veneer uh, so that we won't hopefully be able to avoid, hopefully, moisture problems between our walls 
um, and that the actual wall that the kids could touch in the classroom is called the warm wall because that has the insulation mm -hmm. on the back. The outside wall is a, will be a cold wall, uh, so we won't be losing heat through that through that wall. And so, the other one for the um, the residents out there. Excuse me. They're going to be looking at all the buses. Yes, sir. And the other part is, <clears throat> for some reason, parents still want to bring their kids to school. They don't want to use the buses, mm -hmm. but that's going to cause all kinds of traffic. And there's a lot of people out there are just worrying about it. They just have all the fears. When do you think that your portion and the city's portion should be done? The, uh, we're on two <clears throat> different schedules a little bit. We're using in the same, I believe we're using the same um, a road construction company, Basin Brothers. They've done a wonderful Did job it? for us. Um, and I believe they, they may have the contract for the city. Uh, our work is, is, uh, should be finishing up um, in the spring. That's when the city's work will start. Um, I think as soon as the crews can get out there in, in early spring, they'll start working on Maple Avenue and the sidewalks. We're hoping that some kids will take advantage of the safe routes to school and, and either walk or bicycle to school. And then they can also continue on up to the Y at the end of the day. Uh, but we do have traffic lanes designed for parents who do want to drop off their children or pick them up that will be a little bit insulated from the bus, the bus routes. When you talk to safe passages, safe way to mm -hmm. school, I'll put my city council hat on. Yes. <clears throat> and we just approved an application for about $249,000. Right. And if that worked, <clears throat> there's a good chance that we're going to get it. We had a, a lower amount. The state says, you know, you qualify for more. So we, <clears throat> we applied for it. And so if that works, that will improve the traffic flow and the safety mm -hmm. on Maple Avenue. And even better, if it works, we'll now we'll do that safe way to schools at Simons or the other schools. Right. This has been a, a joint effort between the school district and the city. Andrew Smith has, has run it on the Beautiful city job. side. Uh, he's done a really nice job. And I think it's hopefully a uh, harbinger of what we can do um, as a school district and a city to save money for the community and also improve uh, conditions such as safety walking to school. And the real pur pur purpose of it is you and I, we used to walk quite a bit. Of course, we didn't walk uphill, <laughs> up and walk hill back home in, in 10 feet of snow. And kick a can along and the way. Yeah. <clears throat> and, but most kids don't walk. Right. And the whole purpose is get the kid out to walk, mm -hmm. has his breakfast, calms down, yep. and goes in the classroom ready to, to learn. Yep. And uh, some, com <clears throat> some areas of the city, people are, are walking as a group to school. One parent will do it. Uh, you know, on a, day, on a daily basis, and they'll swap off. And, and that's proved to be very effective nationally and in Keene. Uh, they call it the walking school bus. Uh, so there's a lot of options you want to get out there to folks uh, because a kid coming to school that's had exercise is, is probably going to be uh, more, uh, more ready to learn than one that kind of rolled out of bed, <laughs> got on the bus, and, and rolled into school. And right before we go, they're talking about ADD yep. and AH. The letter ones. ADHD. <clears throat> and some of the research says one of the best things for it is two 15 minutes of green. Yeah. Kids exercising. Well, we're looking at ways to exercise within the classroom as well as part of our, our wellness initiative. So getting kids up and moving uh, has nothing but positive uh, results. So let's go to the video. Okay. To see what happens. Then we'll come back for a few minutes after the video Sounds and wrap great. it up. It's a beautiful, okay. uh, beautiful film. Okay. Hello, I'm Chris Roberts. I'm here with Bill Susbury, Clerk of the Works, at the Keene Middle School site. This is our third visit, so mm -hmm. we're update. Right. And so anytime you have a project, you always have to have an example. Can you explain us this example? Right. This is our mock-up wall for the masonry uh, units that are going into the building. Uh, what you see out here is the outside veneer. And this is all concrete product down below. It's a concrete stone face with a sill and a concrete lintel up above to frame the windows. Brick on the outside with a colored <laughs> mortar. On the inside, there's an airspace, three and a half inches of insulation, which is about an R28, and then the concrete solid block walls. So the building is very, uh, has a good sound quality and is insulated from the foundation right up through the roof.
without about an R30. You also said sound quality, but on the construction side, playing at twice, it's also sound protection too from a lot of the traffic coming outside. Exactly. What I meant by sound yeah. quality was sound deadening yeah, for sound. inside the classrooms. Okay. And so now we're going to go walk, look at some of the other sites? Sure. Okay. Sure. So right now, you're saying this is a technology portion of the building? To our right, correct. Over there? Wrestling, dance. So the fine arts and... Right, athletics, physical, yep. physical activities. And then this is the classroom section behind us, beyond the staging here. The reason why we stopped here, Chris, is to point out the double walls. It's a firewall, which makes the classroom wing a totally separate building from this wing. So for, uh, there are three sections like this in the building. So for egress and things like that, there, there will be fire doors in that big opening. The auditorium is right behind the camera here, and it keeps it totally separate. So it's like being on a ship. So if one part of the ship catches on fire, the other part is completely safe. It, exactly. And the other part is when we did the upgrade at the high school, one of the most expensive things that we had to do was upgrading the firewall, which cost a lot of money right. that we never planned on. Right. So you're doing that in advance now. Well, it's much easier to do in a building under new construction. Yeah. Okay. And much cheaper. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> are we ready to move on to another right. part of the building? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so where are we at now? I know it's like a busy bee place. Right. It is a very busy place, and there's a lot of construction here today. This is the courtyard area. This is a, almost the center of the building. It's surrounded by classrooms. All that is classroom space behind us. The reason we stopped here, Chris, is the uh, uh, going along with the sample wall oh, wow. that we saw is that's the finished product in progress there. The yellow is the insulation. You can see the white over the windows is a weather uh, proofing, is a flashing to stop the water from getting into the it's building. Insulation. Right. And uh, that will have a lintel under it. And the brickwork is going on on both sides of the center there. So this is all before the roof is on in the, in the center. So the stone is all covered on the bottom. You can see the gray area. And so as the center, what is this going to be? Is it going to be grass or is it going to be concrete or is it going to be what? A little bit of both. There'll little be little some nice concrete pavers in here. There'll be a stone wall in here. There'll be grass area. The intention of this space is to use as a, a, an outdoor classroom space when the weather is nice. It'll be a nice place for students to study and write do things. Some of the fine arts, the art room is over in here, classrooms and special needs is over uh, on this side. Okay, we're going to get the winters coming. You're going to have ice storms. You're going to, what are we going to do with the windows? Are they going to be open? They're going to be blocked or what? As soon as the brickwork is finished, the real windows for the building will be installed. So the, that'll be uh, watertight. Until then, though, they'll be putting plastic in the windows as a stopgap measure uh, to try and keep the elements out of the building. So once these windows are sealed, is the classrooms going to be heated and worked on during the winter? Yes. Yes. There'll be a temporary heat put in the building, and then, and then hopefully that'll help things dry out, and then the interior finishes can begin. Okay. Where next? Let's go up on the roof. Let's go up on the roof. Okay. okay. On the way to the roof, we're going to stop in one of those corridors. I don't know if you can see it on, um, on camera, but you can see our breath coming in. And I was telling Bill, because of the insulation, we've gone from place to place. Some of the rooms are really cold and some of them are really warm. It, you said insulation doesn't care. Right. If it's cold or warm, it's keeping it that way. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And right now, we're experiencing a colder temperature yep. from outside, from the outside air. It's about 60 outside. It's probably in the 35. 40s, 35 <laughs> or 40 in here right now. So uh, along with your question about sealing up the windows, when we start putting temporary heat in here, as the building slowly warms up, it'll hold the heat in here, which is a construction issue that we always have to deal with. But overhead, uh, I wanted to demonstrate the work that's been done while the outside walls are being constructed. The uh, black iron pipes are in for sprinkler systems. Uh, another black iron pipe is for the heat system, which comes from the central heat plant and then goes to branch lines throughout the individual classrooms. Domestic water is in here. Uh, the basket up on the wall is uh, for data wire, all the data, telephone, tel uh, cable TV, all goes in that basket tray and uh, branches off to individual rooms. And um, drainage lines 
are in for the domestic water. I see um, compensation on the pipes. Is the sprinkler system charged during construction or? Just right now, the sprinkler system has about 120 pounds of air pressure in it for testing. They, they'll do that to detect any leaks or whatever. But no, there's no water in these pipes right now. That wouldn't, that wouldn't be good when the building gets really cold. True. Okay. So we tend to test with air pressure. But all these pipes, all of them get tested for, uh, you know, with air pressure and for a duration of time that's specified by the engineers. When, when you're doing the construction and, and you start doing in, interior classrooms, when do you charge the sprinkler system? How far along? Because the last thing you want to do is have a fire that wipes out your... Right, but that'll come pretty close to the end of construction. Okay. It'll be in, in the end, because along to make that work, it has to go along with the alarm system. Okay. Uh, so that won't get hooked up until most of the building is complete. I would guess probably uh, May or June of next year. So we're ready to go up to the roof? Absolutely. I heard it's warmer up there. Yes, it is. It's outside. <laughs> so we're up on the roof. It's much warmer. It must be about 20 to 30 degrees warmer up here. Than inside. Absolutely. There's a lot of activity up on the roof. And Liz Copa, one of the former school board members, asked about this pretty blue. What is this pretty blue up here? The blue on the walls is a waterproofing material to keep moisture from mitigating through the block so that the inside of the wall should not sweat. This, unlike what you see downstairs, is getting a rigid foam insulation applied to it, which is why those metal uh, fasteners are on the wall. If you look over there, Chris, you can see the brown board on the yep. wall. That is slid into these Z channels here, and then there's another OSB foam piece put on. So there's six inches of foam applied to the wall. It's slightly different than sprayed on. Uh, and then on top of this will be a metal siding, a vertical metal siding. And so we, we have these people here laying, why would anybody want to lay foam on the base of the roof? These wood frames are for the RTUs, which are rooftop units, or ventilating units that blend the outside fresh air with and remove the inside stale air and then add heat or air conditioning to the building. I shouldn't say air conditioning, just cooling. It's not air conditioned air. But it's to keep the building from being a sick building. Yeah, absolutely. It changes the air and constantly. It. Yes, <coughs> and leaves the heat in the building, the majority of the heat in the building. So what's going on here inside these frames are pink insulation. There'll be three some inches. concrete, yep. yes, three inches of pink insulation. Uh, then there's a concrete base that goes onto it, and then the uh, rooftop unit will get roofed in over that concrete and rooftop unit will sit right on that. These squares here, these rectangles, are for the ductwork to penetrate the roof and go into the building. So the concrete would be able to spread the, the bearing load over exactly. the Exactly. It's, it's a reinforced lightweight concrete. Okay. Right. And that unit over there with the gray bottom and the wood handrails around is a light shaft. There will be a, a skylight on top of that for natural lighting in those hallways. Below that is a team teaching area. And so again, a nice sunny day. Absolutely. The light can come right in here. That's right. Natural students, light instead of artificial that, light. That's right. That's right. Students can gather under that space and have a, an impromptu classroom there. It's kind of like um, Plato and Socrates. Absolutely. Aristotle. Let's go to Ab the tree. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Where do you want to go now? Let's walk around to the other side. We'll take a look at some of the uh, site work that's been done, the track and field, the uh, athletic storage building and we can look at some of the other hip roof on the, on the way back there. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> so we're standing up here on the roof. About how far off we, are we off the deck? Well, the ridge of the roof is 42 feet from the concrete foundation. So right now we're about maybe 32 feet or so. About three, a little bit more than three stories high. Yes, yes. We're on the parapet. <clears throat> Chris, this is a flat roof we're standing yep. on now, and then it goes up to a hip roof. And what you can see behind us is the gray area at the bottom is TPO. And that's where the metal standing seam roof will stop. And on the black area, which is ice and water shield, is a protectant that goes underneath the metal. So the next time we come back, you'll probably see a nice metal standing seam roof on the hip roof. The other side is just where we just were with the blue siding and all that. So this is kind of a facade. It makes a very interesting uh, architectural feature here with the hip roof. And then uh, behind us is a corner. The roof drains up in here. What's interesting about this is the, there are six inches of insulation behind this uh, angled roof. 
and we're standing on three inches of insulation. It's designed so there's a little bit more heat transmission here where we're standing to melt the snow as it slides off that roof and get it into the roof drains. That was one of the questions I'm going to ask, but if you have six or seven inches of snow, it comes down right into here. Right. What collects here. It collects here. There's a concrete okay. wall behind us, the parapet wall. Yep. And that slowly as it melts, due to the, the heat loss that was planned into the building, it goes into these roof drains. If you recall <laughs> earlier, we talked about the galley system this year. All yep. this water that drains off this roof is collected and yep. will be used for an irrigation system. None of it's wasted <clears throat> and none of it goes into the town drainage. When we look down here, we've got these two walls, mm -hmm. facades. Yes. Oh, what are they? They are. How are They're we going exactly to fix it? facades. And what, what that is is a gable end from the outside. And there'll be a roof ridge coming off the top and another roof on there. This will be the one and only time that we'll be able to walk undisturbed up on this roof without an interruption. So those are little Aesthetically gables. Pleasing. That's all that is, is, is an architectural design. In the circles will be a, a louver in there just for architectural value. And you, you, like we did, we just came back from the Y construction site, TPO. For the average person, what's a TPO instead of top? But, you know. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, TPO is a uh, like a plastic roof. It's okay. it's a plastic material, and I don't even know what the TPO stands for, but it's a membrane that okay. gets cemented onto these boards here, and it's an elastic plastic. It it shrinks and and, uh, and expands with the, with the, the, weather, with the, the weather, the cold, and all that. It's very durable, it doesn't puncture very easily, and if it does puncture, it's very easily Easy. patched. All right. uh, typically, most flat roofs in the city are TPO or some kind of a, a polyurethane uh, membrane. So while we're up here, let's take a look around. We've got that building over there. That's the athletic storage shed, and the back gable is a concession stand for the games and things. On these two garage doors that are in the front there where the van is, uh, one side is for uh, storage of athletic equipment, and the other side is for maintenance equipment, lawnmowers and things like that that the maintenance people will use to uh, maintain the fields. And I've noticed right now that the track, the track's looking pretty good. Right, and that's just the base coat. That's there will the base. be a like a plastic resin coat that goes on to that to make that a terrific uh, surface. And the white piping that you see being assembled there is the beginning of the irrigation system that will be buried under that track. Uh, and that's where the water from the roof collection system will, will eventually end up. A lot of tracks around the country uh, recycling old tires, old stuff to, to put into the track. Is that going to be part of the membrane or is it just going to be? I don't think so. I think it's a resin. It's I a really resin. don't know the answer to that, but I think it's a liquid that gets applied to this that makes a, a very kind of a soft, rubbery uh, surface on this track. When we, as he's panning over to the track, if I look down there, <clears throat> you've got dirt, you've got quality soil, you've got organic material, and then you have a, a separator. Are they separating that for, for use here? That's exactly what's going on today. When we started here, this was a wood lot that was all um, cut down obviously and the stumps were uh, chipped for heat processes the wood was sold for lumber um, what just in this all this material was stockpiled here on site what you can see in the background we'll probably take a closer look at in a few minutes is a separating process where they're separating the uh, organic material the roots stones and everything and they're stockpiling the cleaned up loam in the back it'll all be uh, dispersed on site here placed about four inches and that's where the grass will grow. So all this was on the, on the property, none of it's been trucked in and none of it will leave. Quality topsoil is pretty expensive. Yeah, it is. So it really saving is. saving quite a bit of money by it, doing it that This way. has been an outstanding piece of property. It's uh, got great drainage and there's very little rock in it. It's very sandy soil. So we've had very, very little problem with any excavation or any drainage here. I know we're here on the, the site. We'll see some other places. but. Mr. Gurney's home, 34 West Street, there's a big sign for sale. And the reason for it, for sale is they have a SAU 29 building over there. Right. Hopefully we'll be able to get the opportunity to see the S SAU 29 building coming along. Yes, it's just out of our camera shot right now, but we can walk around the uh, edge of the building and get a good look at that. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> we're sitting out here, standing up here, 
We're looking at the SAU building, and then we have a blue building. So, Bill, what is the um, blue building? That blue is the same waterproofing we looked at on the other block. That's just waterproofing. And what's to, the and function of the building? That is the central heat plant. The boiler, the central wood chip boiler will be in there. It will heat the Jonathan Daniels School, the SAU building, and the whole middle school out of one power plant. Um, the reason for the blue is that that gets essentially the same metal coating and insulation as the other walls we looked at on the other side. And so the wood chips are going to come from local, local areas? Yes, and they'll be trucked in on the other side of that. There's some very large uh, garage doors. The truck will back into that. It has a live floor and will dump the uh, wood chips almost directly into the boiler. They go into a holding area and then they're augered and conveyored into the, uh, into the boiler. Do we have a backup system if for some reason it's down? Yes, there will be three new boilers in the middle school here for the swing seasons, days like this when the, it's just too warm to facilitate a wood chip plant. And there are two boilers in the Jonathan Daniels School. Um, so there are swing boilers. The three boilers in the middle school will also heat the SAU. So the heating will flow both ways in that pipe. Okay, where do we need to go next? Let's go down and take a look at the SAU. Okay, we're going to go down and take a look at the SAU building. So, we're, we're over there before. Now we've got a close-up. We're talking about the installation. So we've gone right. from the pretty blue to what? Back to the pretty blue. We've walked essentially around the, the roof building. of the building. But uh, on, the, on the pretty blue color, we have a base coat of three-inch insulation, and then a second coat of three-inch insulation. And this has OSB on the outside, the Orion strand board. And this will be what the sheathing is nailed to, the outside skin. So this insulation is put in between the, the, the metal flasking? Yes, the, 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 the Z strips are to hold that against the wall. That's the fastening method. So the Z strip is, is applied to the wall with metal fasteners. This is held by the Z strip. This gets bolted right through and shot into the wall. And then the last skin is a gray skin. It's like a tie, Tyvek that goes on the outside. Although Tyvek is a brand name and that's not Tyvek. And so <clears throat> you're waterproofing it, you create a little air barrier. Yes. Then you put this on. And put right. another one. Right. So you're looking at one, two, three, four, five ceilings, five different surfaces. Absolutely, type of yes. Top. Yes. And the foam has the R value, the insulation value. So the whole building is an envelope from the foundation up clear to the roof. It's all tightly sealed. And so now if I look in here, I kind of look like I'm on Star Trek or in the side of some right. grain bin. Right, right. That's the metal studding. Uh, for these windows are called borrowed light windows. The students will never be able to see directly out the windows. It's just for a shared light uh, experience. So the sheetrock is, is angled in there to reflect the light down for natural lighting. I don't know if you can see it or not, but down below there are straight windows out to the back that we're used to, and those will be venting windows. These are like a, a picture window here that will be solid glass. So what you're going to do is you're going to put sheetrock yes. on here. Yes. Paint it and then use it as a reflective to push the light down? Yes. Yes. The natural light will be, always be natural light in these rooms. Also, the electric lights in this room are uh, very energy conserving lights. And all the classrooms have uh, sensors, oc uh, occupancy sensors. So when there's no one in the room, the lights turn off after a certain few minutes. They'll shut off. And they'll come on automatically when the occupants enter again. Okay. Thank you. Let's, You're welcome. We're ready to move again. This is a storage area for the chips. On the other side of this blue metal wall is where the boilers are. We can go around there and, and take a look at those. So about, maybe I'll catch you on this one, about how many cubic yards of chips could be stored here? At I have, I have <laughs> no, that's definitely a question for Tom uh, Remillard. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Because it is pretty, pretty deep. You know, you figure some of those trucks have it hold about 20 cubic yards, and I'm looking at this. This could easily hold at least six to eight of those trucks. Absolutely. So but you, uh, there's a, con, um, an auger con, un, under this and a conveyor belt on the other side of the wall that will deliver those chips to the boiler. Okay, so we're going to go look around and see the front of it? Sure. So we're here in the wood chip building. The smell of fresh concrete. <laughs> That's right. And paint. And paint. And so, like we're talking, we just came from the other side, right. so all the wood chips go on the other side of this blue wall. That's correct. Everything's blue here. That's Maybe right. we're going to have to change the <laughs> color, right. right, from the cardinals to the That's bluebirds. Right. right. Uh, so the, the pile 
The stockpile oh. is on the other side of the wall, like you said. They're delivered by this auger right here. And the, the chips fall onto a conveyor belt that'll be in that lower bunker. They'll be delivered to the boiler over here. Our boiler number is 869. And it's all shrink wrapped now. But soon there'll be a skin on it and, and all that. And the blowers are in the front. So essentially, this boiler will be on from, I would guess, November to March, beyond constantly. And as it makes hot water, Chris, the yep. hot water will leave through those insulated pipes, pipes, through the concrete wall there. Those two pipes go to the Jonathan Daniels, Daniels School and make that loop. And behind the camera are two other pipes like it that go to the middle school. So all the heat from this boiler will be distributed through the three buildings as needed. It's a constant water loop. It'll be on all the time. The big silver structure here is an electrostatic precipitator that electro electronically charges the smoke and pulls the uh, debris, extra, particles and, extra particles and things out, and they dump into <coughs> barrels below it like a hopper system. And then from there, it goes into the blower on the extreme right and then right up the chimney. So the air is clean before it leaves this building. And that's pretty important because clean is keen is getting nailed more and more for dirty air. Right, right. And the last thing you'd want to do is like today is overcast. Exactly. You, the air is very heavy today. The air is heavy. If we had all these unburnt particles, they would all stay in the area. They'd hover. They right. would hover right. in the area. Right. So what's going to discharge here will be pretty clean. Uh, up, uh, we are about 28 feet below the roof height here. This is a very tall building. As you can see, the uh, uh, structure, the mechanical equipment here is very tall, and there are hoods that go over this. So that's why we're sort of below grade, and the building's very tall, and there's a 65-foot chimney outside. Right now it's black, but it's designed so it'll be a rust color. It's designed to rust, and that'll be the finish on it. Okay, got another question. Hope it's not a gotcha question. Right. We just came from the school building, the auditorium, every place. Everything in there is steel studs. Now we're here and we're going to go into the SAU building and we have more wood. Right. Let's, why is right. that? It, it's an economy thing. Uh, this building is a wood structure. I think it's probably less money than the, the uh, uh, middle school. The middle school is designed for seismic activity okay. to last it's going to last at least 50 years it in, the, better, in, right? in the current, <laughs> yes, and it'll probably be renovated in 50 years and, and go on much longer than that. So it's a longevity issue. Sure. And this building doesn't get the use that the middle school does. So that's their different uh, design criteria. And this building is also a CMU, concrete masonry unit building. It's all structurally reinforced. But that's because it's the boiler room and there's a lot of concrete and uh, block in here. So. If for some reason 20 years from now we need to replace the boilers, does the roof have to come off? I would, I would think so. Either that or they cut the boilers apart and, and bring new boilers in through the doors. But it would be a, a significant cost. You know, as an engineer, I don't, I don't like cutting boilers because yeah. you never know what's in boilers. It's right. not always right. safe. It's right. Sometimes right. it's much safer to raise the roof and put a new one in. Could happen here. Could happen here. These. Boilers didn't have to come in through the roof. They didn't have to be lowered in with a crane. They came in essentially through the doors and, and up over the top. Okay. So now we go to the SAU 29 future home. And like you said, Bill can't get it until he sells the other one. So you might see him out there. Please buy my, buy my <laughs> building. <laughs> okay. We're now in the, the future home of SAU 29. I'm here yes, with sir. Bill Gurney, the co-superintendent. And so we're standing what should be your office pretty soon? This uh, hopefully will be my space. Um, it's, and then where the camera is now, it will be a secretarial area. Beyond that will be a co-superintendent. And this general quarter of the building will be a superintendent space. And as you pan out that way, there'll be a reception area, a secure entryway now. We figure it's, it's time, given some of the situations that have happened around the country, to have a secure entryway, and then human resources, because that's really the busiest yep. part of our, uh, of our organization. Teachers are coming in, going all the time, checking on benefits and all. And then we'll have special education and business at the far end, closest to the wood chip plant. 
and then the, the middle space will be a beautiful uh, cafeteria area, uh, and also one central workspace where the, the copiers and, uh, and other uh, office uh, equipment will be. And uh, it's going to be great. We'll be able to stand here on a nice afternoon, look at the girls playing softball, um, kids playing on the soccer field. We're really connected to the site. It's one of the most exciting things about the project has been how close it's going to get us into the daily life of the elementary school, Jonathan Daniels, and also the, um, the middle school. So we're very excited about this location. <clears throat> When, when people go and say, they're looking at this, say, wow, this is a heck of a lot of room. What's the difference between the, the square footage here and the old building? It's, a, it's about 2,000 feet, square feet. More or less? Uh, less. But that doesn't take in the amount of wasted space at our current location at 34 West Street. There's chunks of that building that we just can't use. Um, here, it's designed as an office building. Every square foot will be used. Um, for, for the business of, of running the schools. So um, in terms of efficiency, this will be much better. We'll all be on one floor. Uh, we'll, our communications will flow more easily. And, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll have uh, a steady temperature all year round and also be very energy efficient. Uh, all three of the schools, the, the two schools and this building, will be hooked into the wood chip plant. So, uh, so we'll be a very tight uh, economical building to run in for the future. A few of the old timers will, would remember that it's on Federal Street, and the reason it's on Federal Street is because it used to be the old post office. Yes. The grand design, the yeah. wide open spaces. It's a wonderful building. If there was a, a, a major storm coming, that's the building the, you want to be in. Because the walls are, are thick, but the windows are small, and you know the heating the building is tough in the winter, cooling it is <clears throat> tough in the summer. Uh, it's a beautiful old building. We're going to miss being yeah. there, but uh, uh, this is going to be more efficient for us. I think if I remember correctly, it's about 30% of the old building as of no use. Because to us, of, yes. of stairways, hallways, yeah. and everything, just totally yeah. inefficient. Yep, yeah. and uh, we, uh, we have that records uh, storage area here, so uh, we'll be able to keep the records that we need to keep on the <laughs> students uh, right here at the building. Uh, that's watertight and secure, and uh, we, uh, we're not going to have that up and down kind of action. And we, and we have unlimited parking, basically. We have a back lot that will be used by us during the day for families uh, coming to watch their children play sports on the weekends and the afternoons. And um, we also will have parking space out front, so we'll have much more uh, handicap accessible parking and then parking for visitors as well. You were talking about the, the data storage. Right. One, we all have to admit, the computer system and how the IT is really a nightmare yep. down at um, 34 West Street. It's hard. And the other part is, because of the new requirement in the state of New Hampshire education, you have to track a child from day one. Each child, remember, yep. each child gets their own specific code. That's so right. where they go from school to school, you should be able that's, that's going to take that's, much that's more huge. data processing capabilities. Yep. And we'll be tied in on, on our data storage with the middle school. Uh, we also have a conference room here. We have several conference rooms, <coughs> but the major one is just over there. You pan by it uh, where the lumber is stacked. And that's, uh, that's going to be camera ready. The cameras will be installed there so that meetings can be conducted there and linked into Channel 8. Um, and that this can be, uh, can be used at nighttime and when we uh, have less need for custodial service and not have to yeah. rely so much on our, our school buildings as we do right now. And so also because professional education is a big deal. Yep. Professional education is expensive, travel is expensive, yep. then you get the TSA situation. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to do with the conference room, yes. video education, video That's very professor exciting. training. And we'll be able to provide professional development for teachers in the district <coughs> right here uh, at, a, at a fraction of the cost it would be to send them off to workshops and things like that. And not only the fraction of the cost, there's a lot of teachers that would like to go, but that thing called life and family yes. tends to get in their way. 
and substitutes. And, and, <laughs> and finding a substitute. Right. But to go in and say, hey, on some of them, on-demand education. Yep. So you can say, hey, you know, I'm going to, I need to take two hours off yep. out of a class. So this is my break. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to pick up this class. Yep. And that falls in line with the new guidelines coming out of the Department of Education for embedded professional development. That they don't want to see us sending people off campuses to, uh, to learn about things and maybe we don't implement them. Going with job embedded professional development as you described, we can, we can attract more people at one time and really serve a, a bit, an easier time of getting it uh, out into the schools and in practice. But what are you going to do with those off-site ones in San Diego and Hilton Head and Maui? <laughs> well, those would be people can take vacations with their families on their own. <laughs> okay. What we're going to do now, we're just about finished. We'll go yep. around and we'll pan around the construction site to really give the viewers an opportunity yep. of how much the construction has moved along. Yeah, and we're planning open houses here uh, for <clears throat> pro hopefully late summer when people who have supported this proposal this uh, proposal from day one and has financially financially supported it, we'll be able to come and see how how their money has been spent. Oh, and one other final one while we're talking is when is the school supposed to be finished? July 20th. So July 20th. So we're talking almost still eight more months. Yep. And so while there's always a concern, <clears throat> how is it going, the concern of what Mother Nature yep. is going to do, but overall, you have a comfortable feeling that it's going to get done in time. It's going to get done. Uh, the construction is outstanding. We've been really impressed with the, with the, with the way McMillan has, uh, has overseen the project in terms of the quality of the work that we're seeing. The, sub, the economy that we have, there's not a lot of work out there for subcontractors. So we really have top-rate subs on the job that we might not have gotten in a very competitive uh, building market. So we're, we're very blessed with, uh, with the people we have working here. Uh, if we have a good winter, I think everything will, you know, our start date will be firm and, and the kids will be here the first day of school. But you can't control the weather, yeah. as we were discussing a little earlier. You know, we get hit with a couple of ice storms that could draw things pretty much to a halt here and, uh, and may, may impact the pro project. Well, We've only been on site for maybe a little bit more than now. Yep. We came here, it wasn't too bad. The sun was breaking through, yep. then we had a few drops, and it looks it's only a matter, it's fogging in, and it's yep. only a matter of time that it may rain. Yep. All those have a, a direct connection on how fast they, they can lay the bricks. That's, that's right. All those change, yep. they had no control. And then the temperature, they can't start laying the masonry blocks until the temperature's 40 degrees. Yeah. And, uh, and so for a while there, we were worried. There was a couple of very cold mornings and, and guys were waiting to start work. Uh, we've, been, we've had a great couple of weeks here for catching up yep. on the project. So that's, that's gonna be to our benefit down the road. And I was listening to Dottie Frazier, mm -hmm. the principal on, on the radio. Yep. And part of it would, would any project you prioritize. Yes. You've made the determination the classrooms and the dining facilities are must have. Right. They must be ready to go in July. Yeah, and for our situation here at the middle school, the brains of the building are, are in the central part. Uh, by that I mean not just the administrators, <laughs> <laughs> but the computers and the fire alarm systems and the messaging. And that has to be done before the Keene Fire Department is going to give us the, the right to move in. Uh, so that's a real key for us, too, and that's where you see the walls going yep. up now. Okay. Uh, that's got to be secure and dry before we can install that electronic equipment. Okay, so we can move on. Yes, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure.
Well, you talked about building aid. You yes, sir. Fifty-eight percent of building aid. Yep. And so, but this may be the last building aid that we'll be able to get. The state is hurting. The state hasn't funded building aid mm -hmm. out of the operation budget, I think maybe four years now or three years. Yep. And that's usually about $80 million. And so we know they're not going to put $80 million in the operation budget. Well, they don't have it. They don't have it. <clears throat> and they're going to want to cut. So in, in a short, what do you think it, the future is? Because some people are talking about rewriting the... Um, the funding law are all over again. Well, I think our money is safe in terms yep. of the middle school. Um, everything that I've heard is that they're not going to go back on, on their promise. So I think we're okay, and we're also <laughs> really, really lucky that we timed this the way that we One did. One year could have made a and, difference. And it was, it was really luck, and uh, we, uh, we were in the right spot at the right time. Uh, if we were to try to, I don't know in, in good conscience we could uh, present this project now uh, without without the assurance that building aid would be there. Um, I think what's going to happen is it's also affecting uh, rehabilitation projects as well, so that we're going to start to see a pretty steady decline in, uh, in the fiscal plan of our schools right across the state. And at some point, we're going to see what happened in Unity affecting other school districts as well, where you either close your school or you pay the money out of 100% out of the pocket of the taxpayer. And that's just short-sighted and unfair to folks in the local community. Because over the years, the, the whole state population has funded the building of new schools and the rehabilitation of old schools. And now we're going to say to some folks who have contributed for 30, 40, 50 years, their communities now have to pay up the entire cost themselves. Uh, so it's a fairness issue in my yep. mind as well. For the kids who are going to be in buildings that are inferior and to people who have faithfully supported the building program in other communities, um, all their tax-paying life. Massachusetts used to have one of the school, worst school systems. Yep. It's now rated number We're one. We're products of that system, yeah. though, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I know, and I always thought it was a really good system, but it, it dropped off a little bit in the 80s and 90s. Yep. But it's brought back. Well, in Fall River, they just built six brand-new elementary and middle schools. Yep. And about four months ago... The state of Massachusetts gave the city of Fall River a hundred and twenty-six million dollar check to cover the costs of the school. If they're demanding a quality education, yep. they don't want it. And there's a building school, Watson, that was built in the 1880s. I went to the school for fourth grade, and it's still being used. In wow. In Massachusetts, saying you can't get, yep. it doesn't matter how good the teachers are, you can't give a quality education no. in old buildings like that. No, it just the <clears throat> infrastructure is not there for today's uh, education. And, uh, and I grew up in Medford, and two of the schools that I went to uh, in elementary school are now condominiums. And uh, they sold them, and, <clears throat> and, and now they're back on the tax rolls. And they've consolidated into one large school uh, that they renovated probably back about 10 years. So Massachusetts has, has really put a lot of effort in. And they've built an incredible yeah. high school, I think, in Newton, totally a taxpayer, yeah. state taxpayer yeah. expense, that is a, is a model for the rest of the country. Boy, just a ridiculous <laughs> amount of money, yeah. though. Time um, just flew by. Yes. We're end of the hour. Oh, and that was a great tour of the it school. It was a great tour. <clears throat> and so I want to thank people for watching, and I will see everybody out there, hopefully on the long road.